The following story is also available as a read-only version. Check the link in the description if you're interested. What follows is the transcript of a speech given by Professor Joseba Iturdi, Department for Evolutionary Psychology, University of the Basque Country, at the European Conference on Psychology and the Behavioral Sciences in Brighton, United Kingdom, on the 25th of July, 2014. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all survived the coffee they served down in the lobby. I, for one, will be going to bed earlier than usual these next few days. I'd like to talk this morning about the phenomenon we call the Uncanny Valley. I can hear some of you groaning in the back, and if McDormand is in the room right now, all I can say is, it's only going to get worse. The Uncanny Valley, for those among you who don't know, which I presume is not many, is a phenomenon wherein recreations of humans that look almost, but not quite human, elicit an apprehensive, possibly even fearful response. If the thing looks more human, like an actual human, this goes away, and the same applies when it looks less human. You wouldn't, for instance, be afraid of a toaster, or even of those Japanese robots that seem to serve no function but that of being robots. The entertainment industry appear to be the ones who brought this into the spotlight of modern psychology with their animated movies. Many characters were close to lifelike, but just not lifelike enough, so they elicited the fear response in adults and children alike. I discovered that this is actually something that modern 3D animators take into consideration when they make their films and games. And some of you may have read my paper wherein I investigate whether or not the Uncanny Valley is exclusive to older generations who did not grow up with the CGI the way young people did. It turned out that there was no generational difference in the discomfort response to images associated with the Uncanny Valley, and this result has been reproduced by several of our esteemed colleagues in the field. So I decided to approach the subject from a perspective of evolutionary psychology, because I find it very fascinating and surprisingly little research has been done on the subject. I think a good question to ask is, why? Why does the Uncanny Valley exist? What is the evolutionary advantage of it? We understand the basic physiological nervous responses that have kept us alive in nature. We need food to survive, so early in our evolution we developed hunger. We need to take care that our bodies remain intact, so we have the same thing with pain. This includes simple but ingenious tricks, such as finding bitterness uncomfortable, especially as children. Many poisonous plants that can be found in the wild are bitter in taste, and children have, because of their lower body mass, a weaker immune system to withstand an accidental ingestion of toxins. We may be an intelligent species, but these are tools that millions of years of evolution have given us to avoid situations in which we might get ourselves killed. Instinct, if you want to call it that. The most sophisticated of these, in my opinion, is fear. We may laugh at people who are afraid of the dark today, but we forget that not so long ago, being in the dark could be very dangerous indeed. We rely on our vision much more than we do our other senses, and without it we cannot see the terrain in front of us or the predator in the corner of our eyes. This is why we are afraid of the dark. The dark is a dangerous place. Fear can also be much more complex in the way it protects us. Many phobias are caused by traumatic events, yes, but there is also a tendency for phobias and dangerous creatures to be instinctive. Face a baby with a snake or a spider, and it will be afraid even if it has never seen either animal. The basic physiological plan of snakes and spiders is apparently imprinted into our psyche on an evolutionary level. It is in our DNA, if you want to put it in simplistic terms, because these creatures have been and continue to be extremely dangerous, especially in the regions where humanity originated. Fear protects us from danger, and if such complex fear responses are often seen in humans who are brought into contact with spiders and snakes, why do we have a similar response to things which look close to human, but are not quite human? Why is this response so universal? if the similar response with spiders and snakes is just common. 
What is the danger that has, over the course of human evolution, come from things that look almost human? Why are we so afraid of them? This is hardly fear of the unknown, because things which are further away from humanity appear benign. It is present across cultures, across age groups, and even repeated confrontation with it does not alleviate the fear. Phobias, even instinctive ones, can be treated. The uncanny valley cannot. This suggests that, whatever the reason for its existence, it has posed a greater risk for our ancestors than venomous spiders or snakes, or whatever dangers lurked in the darkness. Evolution saw fit to allow us to not be afraid of lions anymore, but the uncanny valley remained. However, if you examine the world today, where is this danger? I see none of it. If you look in the fossil record, where has it gone? Archaeological evidence offers little but conjecture, though the archetype of the creature that pretends to be human but is really some sort of vile monstrosity is found among all mythologies. We can see, like ripples in a pond, a predator that we cannot begin to properly describe in the very foundations of our psyche. Those among you who are now afraid, and I can tell that it is many, will rationalize that this predator must have been driven to extinction if he no longer exists. But do not let fear blind you from the truth that this is not how evolution works. Any species that is driven to extinction does not simply disappear. It leaves behind populations that are adapted to survive the factors that drove to the extinction of its cousins. If we assume that the uncanny valley developed so we could recognize these predators, it is clear that we can no longer do that. Additionally, there are not many predators around today that are just on the foreign side of the uncanny valley. The overwhelming evolutionary pressure on these beings would have been to look more like us, so we could no longer recognize them as different. Professor Iturdi did not attend the next day of the conference, and was reported missing by his wife 48 hours later. His contributions were stricken from the official record, and old colleagues will deny having ever heard of him. If you liked this story and would like to hear more, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. A new short story is uploaded every Wednesday, and there will occasionally be another one in between if I find the time. Thank you very much for listening, and have a great day.